Hey everyone, it's Blade, and today we're gonna to talk with you about the tips and tricks for the Samsung S23 Ultra, or just the first thing that I recommend you do with your new Samsung S23 device. Most of the tips, they do work both for the S23 regular and S23 Ultra. However, it's gonna be a specific part in this video about the S Pen, and all of the time codes will be down below in the description. So if you do not have a device with an S Pen, feel free to skip that part to the specific one that you need. I'll try to structure this video in the same way as you connect with your phone. So at first you see the lock screen, you unlock it, then the home screen, and some other things like the notification panel and etc. So that's gonna be a packed one, let's get started. So let's start with the lock screen. To change the quick apps on the bottom, go to the settings, then lock screen, tap on the lock screen image, and then click on the icon at the bottom and select an app you want to use. As you can see, most of the apps will require you to unlock the phone, but if you need a messenger there or something else, this might be helpful. Staying in the same menu, you can change also your clock face and move it around and also change the style of the notifications so you can have icons versus the detailed view. Going back to the lock screen menu, the second tab is a smart lock. So if you want to keep your device unlocked while at home or office, or for example when your smartwatch is connected, you can do it in this settings. By the way, you can also set any device as trusted so you can use your car Bluetooth as a trusted device and you won't need to unlock your phone while it is connected to your car. There are a couple of more customizable things in the lock screen menu, such as widgets and always on display that can be set to be always on. You can also change the style of the always clock and change the orientation from vertical to horizontal if your wireless charger is horizontal so you can accommodate your AOD to it. So after the lock screen, we unlock our phone and here's another tip for you. It is a kind of a combination, so choose what exactly you need. So in Samsung, you have an option to add up to four fingerprints. So the way to do is to register your thumbs as two separate fingerprints, as it's sometimes you need to use your phone in the left hand or right hand, but from there you choose your own path. One way, you can go and you can register just a copy of each finger one more time or another option which i recently learned is to do an alternation scan where in one single scan you just scan both of your fingers alternating left and right after each percentage is done all of the things do help increase the speed in which the scanner works but in my personal opinion, there is no difference between having the copies of your finger or having the alternation method, so it's up to you. Now we are at the home screen. Long press on any empty space and you will see the change of the screen. At the bottom, you can select wallpaper and style, themes, widgets and settings. The first three settings you are free to explore to yourself or if you'd like to hear more about in-depth customization of widgets and themes that are available on the Samsung, do let me know in the comments down below or ask me on Twitter at Ilya underscore played. Anyways, for now we go to the home screen settings. Here you can change the grid for the home screen as well as the app drawer and the folder grid. In the settings menu, I highly recommend switching on the swipe down for notification panel, so you can swipe down anywhere on the home screen and the notification panel will appear. This is one of the reasons why I personally chose Android over iPhone, as I don't want to stretch my finger always for that or do extra steps toggling the one hand mode and then swiping. In addition, I don't like having a lot of numbers for the notifications, so I switched to the show without numbers on the icon badges. Just on a side note, I'm making this video after spending a lot of time browsing through Reddit and Samsung members app, as well as doing a bit of my research myself online to see what are the main questions that people have with their new S23 series or S23 Ultra device. 
So this video will not cover all of the things. It will be just impossible. It's like two hour video. So if you know any neat tricks or tips for the S23 and S23 Ultra, please leave them down in the comments below. And if it's something that I haven't covered in the video, I'm for sure will like the reply and try to put it as higher in the comment section as possible for other people to see. As I started to talk about notifications, I highly recommend turning on notification history in the advanced settings. To get there, go into the notification settings from the main settings menu and click on the advanced settings. By the way, 99% of the settings you can find by typing the name of the setting you are looking for on the top search in the settings menu or even in the main search of your phone. Once you are there, click on the notification history and turn it on. It will help in case you accidentally cleared all of your notifications and can remember what was in there. Continuing on the advanced settings, we can go to the advanced features of the phone. Again, use the search or navigate to the advanced feature tab, which is located closer to the bottom of the list of the main settings. And let's start with the labs. Multi-window for all apps allows you to split screen and pop up view for every single app. Keep in mind that it might not work correctly every single time because it's a lab feature, which means that it's still in progress. Let's get back to the previous menu and click on the S Pen. This is only for the S23 Ultra, so feel free to skip to the next part if you are looking for the other tips. However, this menu includes ton of features, so feel free to go through every menu but I highly recommend looking into Air Command to choose the pop-up menu style as well as to change the apps for the quick access in case you use, for example, a third-party note-taking app and want to have it there. AirView should be on by default. If not, turn it on. It lets you peek into the links, events in the calendar and pop-up pictures in the Samsung Gallery. Another recommendation is to turn on the screen of memos. I use it multiple times a day, so when your phone is locked, just remove the S Pen and start writing on the screen. A very handy feature for me and anyone who needs to juggle around multiple things a day. Going back again to the advanced features menu, click on the side key tab. There you can choose double press side key and you can put any app you want. I have camera personally. And if you're not a fan of Bixby, you can change the long press to the power off menu. Back to the advanced features and going into motions and gestures, I recommend turning on double tap to turn on and off your screen. Again, I use it a lot if the phone is on the table and I quickly need to glance at it to see something. And other feature which is highly recommend is mute with gestures. If you get a call or just have an alarm, you can mute it by turning your phone screen down or just cover the screen with your hand. It's much quicker than tapping the side button or rejecting the call. You just flip your phone and that's it. As this phone is quite big, sometimes we need to use the one hand operation. So let's go to one handed mode and turn it on. Choose your preferred action and when you need to return screen back to normal, just tap anywhere outside of the reduced screen size. And the final tip that we're gonna cover in the advanced features menu is located in the screenshots and screen recorder tab. Toggle on delete after sharing from toolbar. Now, when you take a screenshot and share it immediately, it will not be saved in your gallery. That's a nice little feature. Secure folder. If you need to keep some of your photos, notes, or even apps secured from other people who might use your phone, you can use a secure folder. In the settings, search for secure folder or go to the security and privacy, scroll down and you will find secure folder. There you have several settings, option to add apps and other things. To actually move your photos to the secured folder, go to your Samsung gallery, Select the photos that you want to protect, click on more in the bottom right corner and tap on move to the secure folder. Enter your password and you are good to go. Unless you have OneDrive Sync turned on. 
In this case, you will get a pop-up message and you will need to manually delete it from the gallery and then delete it from the OneDrive recycle bin. I know that it is a hustle, but you choose security and privacy over the backup of your photos. Continuing on the security of the device, Samsung has an inbuilt device protection by McAfee. So depending on how you feel about it, you can turn it on and allow it to scan your phone in case you're downloading a lot of sketchy files and APKs from the web. I do have it personally turned on and I do recommend you to turn it on too, just for the sake of protection. And finally, let's talk about the control panel or notification drawer code how you want. You can add additional icons to the control panel by expanding it on the full screen and pressing the plus icon. You can move back the toggles that you don't use and keep in mind that the first six toggles will be in the small version of the notification panel. So in case you need a quick access, feel free to rearrange them in any way you want. One of the things that I personally added to the notification panel is wireless power sharing options. So I can charge my Galaxy Buds with my phone or give some extra battery to my friends. And by the way, if you're coming from the iOS device, long pressing the icon will bring you to the corresponding menu in the settings and not open a small pop-up thing that you have to click again and then you go to the settings. Okay, to be fair, there are multiple tips that are still left including the good lock because I haven't looked at it at all in this video even though I do use it personally and also some camera tips which also include the good lock additional things. So if you would like to see a separate video about the visual customization of your device and some good lock features, for example, I can do like this. So you haven't seen, I haven't touched any anything on the screen or any buttons. What I did was double tap on the back of my phone and I got the screenshot. So if you wanna learn how to do that, do let me know down in the comments below that you wanna see a separate video with good lock tips and I will do it. I will also do a camera tips for the S23 Ultra because I do believe this is the great camera phone. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button and follow me on Twitter at Ilya underscore played and just send me messages over there like make a video, make a video if you wanna see a new video. Thank you everyone for watching it. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you know any tips that I didn't cover in the video, Put them down in the comment section below and now go play some games.